I have an example today to illustrate something that's called a stoichiometry problem. In previous chapters, we've actually avoided this issue by setting up ice table type problems such that you completely avoid this issue. However, you're going to see in upcoming chapters a particular issue, which I'll illustrate right now, is going to keep coming up and we need to pay attention to it. So let's take a look at this example. Cobalt 2 plus plus ammonia goes to uh, a cobalt complex with six ammonias on it. Now, first of all, you want to ask yourself, well, does anything look weird? There should be, because you want to make sure you balance this. So there should be six ammonias right there. Okay. And now, the question really is, what's the equilibrium concentrations? And you might think, okay, well, if I need the equilibrium concentrations, I'll just make this first line my I line. And to get equilibrium concentration, I'm going to do an ice table. So I, C, and E. And that would make a lot of sense. However, there's a problem. Let me show you what the problem is. See this KC? It's extremely large. 4.5 times 10 to the 33. That means which side is favored? The right side. K heavily favored on the right hand side because K is so large. What does that mean? Well, the equilibrium is so favored on this side uh, there's going to be what's called a stoichiometric shift or movement of this to this side before I can even begin the ice table. So I actually cannot do this yet. I will be able to in a moment after I think about this stoichiometrically. Okay? So what I'm going to have to do is actually cause this to shift to the right hand side before I even start the ice table. I will have to get to the ice table in a second. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, well, this is going to shift according to the one that has the smallest amount, and that's this. And this is all going to react away and form over here. Why again? Because K is so large. So it's going to subtract off on both sides. So 0 0.1 there and add 0 0.1 here. And then you're going to sum these up so that you'll get a 0 there, a 0 0.1 there. Now, before I continue, there's one small detail you'll have to remember. Uh, this is stoichiometrically subtracting off this same amount here to get 0 there. It all is going to shift to the right-hand side immediately, again, because k is so large. However, right here, there's uh, one small detail. I'm going to have to multiply that point 0.1 by 6 because stoichiometrically there's 6 more moles of this than there are of uh, the cobalt. So in that case, instead of going 4 minus point 0.1, I'm going to go 4 minus point 0.6. So that's going to end up being 3.4. Now I'm able to start my ice table, which would be I, C, and E. Okay, before I go through and write down the ice table so that you can see what it will look like, let me review for a moment the general concept. When you, you need to always look at K and see, is there a zero on the unfavored side? In this case, the unfavored side was this side right here, the reactants, and there's no zero there. In that case, you need to do what's called a stoichiometric problem before the ice table. And that's what the top part of this represents. It's a stoichiometric problem. So, one more time, you need a zero on the unfavored side. You'll notice now, we do have the zero on the unfavored side. And now we can begin the ice table. In previous chapters, you never did this before because we set up the problem so that either uh, there were no zeros or the, there was no unfavored side or there was always a zero on the unfavored side. So in that case, you are totally fine. However, starting now, this is going to be important. Now, let me go through the ice table just so you can see what it would look like in this problem. You have to consider now C, or the shift. It's going to shift to the left. So there's going to be a plus X here, plus 6X and minus X. 
Okay, first, the plus is on the side with the zero, or Q is near infinite, so it has to shift to the left. And then there, you need to remember to put a six here. That six comes from right there. Okay? And so the E line is merely the sum of the I and the C lines. So you get something that looks like that. Now, let me write the equilibrium expression so you can see what it looks like. All right, like. here's the equilibrium expression. I hope you still have the, react, uh, the reaction down on a piece of paper because I had to erase it to do this part. So, Kc is going to be products over reactants. Notice that the NH3 concentration will be raised to the sixth because the coefficient uh, that was on the NH3. So, what happens is I just plug in the E line straight up right in here. And then I get that 6 right there. Notice that there was three places that the coefficient of 6 appeared. This can get a little confusing, so I just want to elaborate since we're at the end of the problem here. There's three places it's going to appear. One is in the equilibrium expression because you raise it to the power of the coefficient. The other is in the C line of the ice table. You need to account for stoichiometry, and so that 6 has to be there for that reason. And then the third place is the new place for us. That's the stoichiometric part of the problem we saw initially. I had to subtract uh, 6 times 0.1 in the beginning of the problem. So that 6 has to appear there as well, again, because of stoichiometry. So remember those three places for the coefficient.